Okay, let's take something more expensive to bits. This is a VL3000 Virilight, and it's a very, very expensive theatrical and uh, concert lighting fixture. And uh, I've taken one to bits here completely, so you can see what's inside it. So let's take a look at the base. The base, you, you'll instantly recognize what this is. It's a 24 volt DC power supply, mains in 24 volts out. There's a small circuit board down here that has the LCD display and the buttons. And then we've got the DMX in and DMX out. Just loop through here and then it goes back up to the unit. And the power in with uh, some filtering mounted underneath here. We've also got a fan under here for uh, the, power the lamp power supply. So the lamp power supply is on the other side of the base. And this is an older style one, um, it's just seen lots and lots of repairs and abuse probably because we get through quite a lot of the lamp power supplies, they have a harsh life. And these use uh, transformers that are built into the chassis, there's one actually under here as well, inside the, the just underneath the yoke. And uh, they get a control signal, a 24 volt supply and a control signal from the process that tells them what sort of um, lamp energy uh, it requires, you know, it steps up between different levels. So the processor is mounted in one of the yoke arms and it's got all the, as you can see from these diodes here, it's got all the uh, stepper motor drivers as well and the main processing, se processing section down here along with some switch mode uh, power supplies for deriving the 5 volts from the 24 volts. So we've got a few connectors going out here. It, it also marshals power out to local fans um, and to the lamp control circuit uh, which is a relay based, and I'll show you that on the other side of the yoke. Um, and this has three looms coming up. And the reason the uh, electronics are mounted in this arm is because we don't want to really keep them in the head because they'd get very hot and there's not a lot of space in here. It's absolutely stuffed to the hilt with lenses and optical components. So they mount it in one of the yoke arms, which means we only really need data and 24 volts and various other things coming up here. Not too many connections coming through the, uh, the base because these things, keep in mind, these things rotate more than 360 degrees. So it gives the, you know, you don't want a big bunch of wires getting mashed about. And it means the most stress, these cables, uh, these are all the step and motor and sensor cables, the most stress they get is going through this bit here, which um, it's, you know, it's a limited movement. It's not quite 360 degrees, but it's still a lot of movement. Um, but having said that, uh, it's not as bad as if it was right through the base. They do occasionally fail, but it's very rare that the actual um, the looms tend to fail in here. They, you know, they seem to be quite resilient to that. It's a fairly robust wire. Uh, round the other side, we have all the mains voltage stuff, plus we've got the tilt motor. Now, the tilt motor has a couple of encoders. It's got an optical encoder on the motor itself. It's a stepper motor. And it's got a metal flag here that passes through an infrared sensor. And that's merely to give it an indication of when it's in an absolutely vertical position and uh, which side it's pointing. So that when you turn it on, it knows which way it's uh, pointing and it will just basically initialize uh, up vertically. Uh, so the card down here is the lamp igniter card. To keep high voltage uh, from, you know, the high voltage run as short as possible, it basically, the high voltage section of the lamp circuitry is from here uh, in through the, uh, into the uh, main head itself and then straight back to the lamp housing at the back. And when powered up, there's also a relay under here as a safety feature that will cut off if um, either... Uh, it's got a few switches. One is a, a fan safety switch. If the fan curls aren't down, because this thing requires a lot of cooling, it'll uh, kill the lamp. If the lamp housing is opened at the back, it'll kill the lamp. And if it overheats, it'll uh, kill the lamp. It'll just turn the power off completely from the electronic supply up to the uh, igniter card. Then we go inside. I think the other side's more interesting than this one. The cable looms come in, and there are three. One goes to the lens assembly. It's a multi. It's quite a complex lens assembly, um, and that also deals with uh, local power marshalling for things like fans in the head. This loom here goes on. It comes through the yoke assembly and goes onto a circuit board, and then marshals out. It just fans out into this fairly heavy loom that uh, goes onto this assembly here which is the beam shaver assembly, and that's got uh, various uh, rotating gobos in it, plus shutters, and it's got quite a few different uh, mechanisms in it uh, just for basically controlling the shape of the light. Then another loom comes in from the processor card, and it goes over to here, 
and that then comes down through its little marshalling circuit board onto this assembly which is the colour assembly and this has some fixed colours on top uh, plus it can uh, dim and provide lots of other colour control if we look at the other side it's got shed loads of stepping motors, really lots of stepping motors and each of these is driving in, uh, overlapping discs, I think there's about six discs in all that allow subtle variation, they're dichroic glass discs and as they turn they uh, vary from, in the case of the dimmer it varies from full mirror, it graduates to zero mirror and in the case of the colours like cyan, magenta and yellow for the colour mixing it, uh, it graduates from the saturated colour right down to the minimum colour on the dichroic glass. Quite complex and expensive plates I would guess. Uh, I, wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to break one, I'd, I've never broken one before. I've taken crack ones out of lights but yeah I think they'd be quite expensive to change. And that's fundamentally what's inside uh, one of these units. Uh, this is the, uh, fa the fan that cools the lamp housing. Uh, the lamps, uh, that's the thermal cutout for the fan uh, that can, that's uh, switched through the relay circuit. Quite often uh, when these fans burn out, because these are mains voltage fans, uh, there are two mains things coming up to the head and that is the fan power supply and the lamp power supply. And when these fans are failing, they're tended to replace them with 24 volt ones now and they just utilise the same cables but relabel them and they actually get swapped down below. That's actually the fan cables just looping off the power supply down here. They then get relabeled and put onto the 24 volt side um, and then you have to counterbalance the unit. You have to adjust the balance weights on it, uh, these fine tuning balance weights just to keep the head in in balance. So they're great lights, very very impressive. They've got incredible light output um, and uh, oh and the incredible ability if you put your fingers in the end while it's uh, yeah focusing to crush fingers as well that's quite exciting. Uh, I don't do that. But yeah very very expensive lights, not something you're going to get from your local disco shop but uh, yeah yeah very very uh, very good indeed.